Hi, I'm Greg. I'm going to tie a H&L variant, which is uh, an attractor dry fly pattern. Great to use as an attractor. Uh, it doesn't really represent a true mayfly because of the white tail and the white wings, but it's a great floating fly. It's got a little bit of history here in Colorado uh, when uh, Dwight Eisenhower used to come out here to uh, take vacation. It, the rumor is that it was one of his favorite patterns that he ever fished. Uh, something we can tie in small sizes for small little beta patterns. We can also tie it up into size 8s or even 10s and it works really well for a green drake. Today I'm going to tie a size 12 just so we can uh, show everything here for you. And I'll kind of go through materials. Hook is uh, Tamco 100. You could also use a 100 SP if you'd like. This is the size 12. The thread I'm going to use is some black Uni 8 dot. You could also use Dansville Something that is a wound thread that uh, gives a little bit of bite on material because some of these materials are very slick. So Uni 70 denier would probably not be the best choice for this fly. The tail is going to be calf body hair, as is the wing. The body itself is going to be two pieces what I'm going to do is use a quill of some peacock curl and then for the right at the thorax we're going to tie in some of this eye of the peacock and then hackle it with a couple of pieces of rooster feather uh, brown Coachman Brown, any of those colors would work great for this fly. Uh, we're going to use two to make it nice and thick. We're going to learn to wrap two feathers at once, which is a little different than on some other flies. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mount my thread right behind the eye. Kind of crowd uh, everything that we've always talk about about leaving a room for the eyes or the eye. I'm just bringing thread wraps kind of touch turns to about the halfway point of the shank and then I'm going to come up about halfway up that I just tied in. So I'm about at the 75% point of this hook shake. Gives me a little thread base. Now I've gone in, just for time here, cut off some calf hair. And if you look at calf hair, I usually like to look at the back of the package, see the length of the hair coming off of the hide, make sure it's straight doesn't have any crinkles to it so it's nice and straight. <clears throat> so I've taken some of this off and I have uh, cleaned it of all under fur with the comb and uh, brushed out all the under fur, all the little short fibers and uh, really cleaned this and stacked it. I've stacked it about three times. I'm going to pull this out so that the wing is coming out on the front end. You can see how all those pieces are nicely stacked. I'm going to need that again for the tail here. And then about the amount that you need 
for this. We're going to make this into two individual wing posts. So you don't need as much as I think you uh, initially are going to, your first thoughts are. So I'm going to even pull out a few more little pieces here. Wing's going to be about the length of the body. So I got that measurement from the back of the hook to the front. I'm going to place that flatly right on top of the hook, not at an angle. I'm going to make one, two, maybe three wraps softly, and then I'm going to tighten that up. And then without letting go of the butts, I'm going to come about back about one eye width back. So you can see that there's just a nice little collar. Now I'm going to come in from the back side, switch hands with my scissors. Snip that out. Now by doing that and lifting it straight up and cutting that, you can see we created a little wedge, which you'll see how that comes into play here later on. So now I'm just going to make sure that's nicely tied in and then bring my thread back to right above the barb of the hook. Just kind of create a little thread base. And my thread stops and it's right above the barb of the hook. Then we're going to grab a little bit more of this calf body. You could also use calf tail for this, for the wings and for the tail itself. Calf tail is a little bit more crinkly. A little harder to work with, not as straight. You could wash your calf tail in wool light, blow dry it and comb it and straighten it out just a little bit. But it's still not going to be as straight as the calf body here. I'm just kind of judging the correct amount here. Not as much as the wing, maybe even a little sparser, but we got that stacked. I'm going to measure my length, which is again about the length of the body, maybe just a pinch shorter. So I got, you know, fingertip to fingertip there for that measurement. Bring that right back to the end of the hook. I'm going to make one easy wrap. My second wrap will start bringing on some pressure. Check that length. Looks pretty good. And at this point, let's just come forward. Again, touching each wrap, creating a nice smooth body. And then as I come close to where I cut off the back section of my wing, I'm going to stop so there's a little gap there. Switch scissors again to your left hand. Pick that up. I'm going to cut that, judging it high enough so that when I tie this down, that fills in that little gap. Now if I were to cut this, each piece here, bluntly straight across, we would have a definite bump here. And uh, it's hard to get bumps out, uh, no matter where you start adding thread, if you start adding thread on one part to try to uh, 
uh, eliminate one side, you're creating a bump on the other side. So that's why we're going to do this. Then we bring a thread right up to the base of the wing. Going to pull this wing straight back. And now we're going to form or build with our thread a little thread dam to help prop that up. And one little thing you can do here is I bring my thread back. I think you can see on the camera how I'm pulling it back towards the bend of the hook. So that I make sure I'm really seating my thread underneath that wing. So I can get that to set up. And when I let go, now you can see how that wing is propped up forward. If I overcooked it a little bit, the wing would be going backwards. So you kind of want to be a little careful with that as well. Bring your thread right back to the back of the wing. Kind of reconstitute all your wraps so nothing comes apart. And then all I'm going to do here is I'm looking at top of the, the wing and I'm going to separate them just a little bit. Right now it looks like a compare it done to me. So I got even amounts of material and from the back to the front I'm going to make three wraps and then a wrap behind the wing just to make sure nothing moves on me. Then I'm going to come on my side. If I tilt this this way you can see that a little better on the camera. And then from the front to the back. I'm going to do three wraps right down the middle, again right on top of each other. Make another wrap behind the wing just in case something slips. It won't go anywhere. So now we just have a little fan wing that looks just like that. So now we need to post those to make those an individual wing. So I'm just going to turn my vise so that this post goes up a little bit more vertical. And just like you do on a parachute pattern, I'm going to come up, make a little thread base, and then come back down. Make a wrap around the wing so nothing slips. Flip your hook so that on the near side this little post is a little bit more vertical. And then the same thing, I'm going to come around three, four wraps. If you pull too hard it'll slip right off. So we kind of gently Make these wraps, third time's a charm, right? And make another wrap right behind the wing. And then there is your two posted individual Mayfly wings. Pretty cool. <clears throat> now I'm going to spin my thread, just kind of loosen it up a little bit so it's not quite as uh, tight. Flatten it out a little bit. Since this is a mayfly, I like to kind of make sure I got a little bit of a carrot shape to my abdomen so it's not too flat. Really don't have to do this, but as long as we're doing it, why not? Okay. Now after we've gotten this wing in there, I like to put a little bit of head cement 
right at the base of those posts, just for a little durability. Well, that's uh, setting up. I'm going to grab some quill off of a stem of the peacock curl. Then with our fingers tips, we're going to just strip off all the hurl. could use a pencil eraser to do this, but I find that uh, fingertip or your nail strips that off pretty quick. I'm going to turn that around, cut this little light flimsy piece off, lay it in, and then just wrap that back towards the tail. One wrap right next to the previous wrap. And we're going to move back forward. Pick this up. Put some alkyl pliers on it. We're going to make our body with this quill. You can also use this technique for tying midges, other dry flies. But what it does is, as you can probably see there, it just has just a nice little segmented brown to almost black barring all the way up. You can also go in with your cement. Put a little dab on there and work it around. You can use a needle for this if you want. But if you put a little head cement on there, it's going to make this quill a little bit more durable. Just enough to just kind of coat it. Now, for a little bump right below behind the, uh, the wings, we're going to go back to our peacock curl. And right from the center of the eye, you see where I've kind of cut some of these away. I'm going to grab, I don't know, maybe half a dozen of these, six or seven. Turn them around, cut the tips out, lay them in, tie on top of it, bring my thread back forward. Now I could wrap these by themselves and be good. I like to just pull these straight up and I'm going to give them a little bit of a twist going to turn it into a little bit of a dubbing rope, so to speak. It's going to make it a little bit more durable. And do about three turns should be enough. I've uh, pulled a couple of pieces of rooster off the cape. And uh, basically I'm just going to make sure they're cupped together. 
Gonna find that prime little piece here. Cut off those butts. Not gonna need those. And then uh, we're gonna pull all the barbs off the stem. So I'm just gonna reach in here. pull off a pretty good chunk because what we're going to do is we want to have enough bare stem so that when I make my first wrap I'm actually wrapping bare stem but then also I want this to go forward underneath the hook so that I can remain a nice even body width so again I don't have any gaps it's so almost right up to the eye of the hook. I'm going to wrap that forward, then underneath the wing, and then up to the right behind the eye. Without letting go of these, I'm just going to wrap those forward. Here you can see I did about one wrap, half a wrap, before any hackle fibers started to pop off. That way nothing's going backwards. And then I'm just going to work this forward. You know, about three wraps behind the wing. Bring it underneath. And then I'm going to try to do two to three wraps in front of the wing. There's one, two, three. I could stop there. That'll give me plenty of room for an eye or a head. Let's see if I can get one more in there just for grins. Because the more hackle you do get on your fly, it's going to float a little bit better. Bring my thread underneath. There's my tips. I can go in here and cut that right off. Now I can build a little bit of a head. We're going to whip finish this. trapped any little fibers, little trick I learned from some of these Atlantic salmon fly tire guys in the area. They have these little uh, eyebrow pluckers, little tweezers by a company called Tweezerman. Get the slant nose version. You can go in there and pop off anything that you might have trapped. bit of head cement does not hurt and there we go a H&L variant house of lot another story is the gentleman who designed this fly paid for the lot that he built his house on by selling this fly but uh, whatever the true meaning behind it, it is one heck of a fly. Floats great. Uh, I like to tie another little dry fly behind it many times. Uh, if I'm fishing a real technical water or small freestone creeks, great fly. You can see it and uh, you, you'll catch a lot of fish with that fly.